Now we want to track the motion of this card as it travels up and down the track. Problem is right now we're going from 20 to 80, 60 frames. Every time I step it, it's only one frame. It only advances by one frame. You can see it's 21 in the lower left-hand corner. When I step it again, it's 22, 23. So that's a lot of data, and it's going to clutter up our analysis. More data is always good. You get a better average. But we want to be able to see what's happening with the data points on the actual video itself. So I would recommend about 20 data points. So if I go from 20 to 80, that's 60 data points in total. I want to skip every third frame. So all I would do for that is right click, go clip settings, start frame is 20, end frame is 80, that's good, and my step size is 1, meaning I'm doing every single frame. If I go step size is 2, it goes every second frame. If I go step size is 3, it does every third frame. So I hit 3 and hit enter on my keyboard, and now we're good to go. And you'll notice now when I step it, if you watch the little number in the corner, right now we're on frame 20, and when I step it ahead once, it goes to 23, 26, and it's just going to work a lot smoother for us. Now the next thing we need to do is collect data points. So I just go Create. I want to create a new track. I want to track that little carriage as it moves up and down. It's, I'm going to consider it a point mass. We're good to go. And tracking is really simple. All you have to do is hit your shift button. And notice my cursor changes to another uh, uh, little square icon. And click right in the dead center of my carriage. And when I do that, it advances a frame. Shift, click. In fact, I can just hold down the shift button and choose every frame as we go. Works quite easily. Now you have to pick every single frame or you may get an error message when you go to analyze your data. That's, that is every single frame between 20 and 80. So there you go. The last frame is number 20. I've, I've chosen 20 points. I've done every third one. So we're good. Notice it shows when you're all done, shows all the points I've clicked. So we're on to the next step now. Now notice once I've selected all my points, some data starts to appear on the right. I've got a table showing time, displacement in the x direction, displacement in the y direction. Notice my time increments by 0.3 seconds every time. That should make sense if I right click and go properties on my video. It says the frame rate that this video was shot at was 10 frames per second. So every three frames should be 0.3 of a second, which is what it's showing me. So it looks like it's good to go. Now, to toggle around and look at different graphs or look at different views of the table, it's very simple as well. Right now we've got an X versus time graph. If I want to look at the Y position, I just click on this little X, the, the variable itself right on the graph, and I look at my Y position. And there's my Y graph for this particular falling object. Similarly, on the table, if I want to look at different columns, I just click on table, and it gives me a whole array of different things I can actually analyze. Velocity in the X, velocity in the Y, acceleration, etc. So let's just put velocity in the Y, and you can see that it shows up over here. Now we can also t toggle these screens so that they're not so small. If I just click this little arrow in the upper right, it says maximize this view. There's my graph maximized and if I want to minimize it same arrow. Similarly for the table maximize there's my table I can see all the data points and restore the view go back to where I was originally. Now the rest of this is actually quite straightforward you can analyze the data you can do a whole bunch of things with this program it's actually quite powerful. We'll do it little bits at a time. If I want to look at this graph and for example, and analyze some slopes. Let's look at a velocity graph. There's my velocity in the Y. And if I want to analyze the slope of this graph, maybe I could maximize it so I can have a look at it. It's not necessary though, but at least I can see it. You could print it off and do the slope the old-fashioned way. That's no problem. Or I could go Views, Analyze, Data Tool, Analyze. And this window comes up. 
And notice I've got some choices. I can measure slope, and what it does is as I drag my mouse along, it gives me this value of the slope at any given point in time, and it shows you that value in the lower corner. Slope equals 9.95 in this case at the bottom right-hand side. As I slide it around, the slope of course changes in that lower right corner. So that's a tangent line slope, not super useful for this lab, but I can also fit curves and lines. If I hit Analyze, Curve Fits, notice it automatically chose a straight line for me. There's the equation of my straight line. Vy is at plus b. In other words, y is mx plus b. Gives me the values of a and b. So a is my slope. Remember, mx and b is my intercept. So it gives me my slope reading and my intercept. And there's lots of other features. We'll get into them as we need them.